Hi, my name is Doyle Wofford and I'm a sales engineer with Freedom Communication Technologies. We're here today to introduce you to the R8100 service monitor and do a short demonstration. Before we get started on the demonstration, I think it's important to discuss a few general, discuss some general information about the R8100. First of all, it's important to note that the R8100 is a software defined service monitor. Being a software defined service monitor, it gives us the ability to do some things that we've never been able to do before. An example of this is each and every one of our options are field installable by the end user. To install any one of our options at any time, it's as simple as placing an order for that individual option, then we'll send you an email with an option key. That option key is a 16 digit code that you enter into the front panel and your option will be enabled. It's as simple as that. The next advantage to being a software defined service monitor is firmware updates are free for the life of the product. It's very important to keep the firmware up to date. As we make improvements to the basic user interface or any of our options that are installed on the monitor, those are free for the life of the product. To update the firmware at any time, you simply go to our website, you download the firmware to a USB drive, you install the USB drive into one of the USB ports on the side of the monitor, you follow a short procedure, and in less than 10 minutes, you've updated your firmware. Next, let's get to the fun stuff. One of the advantages that we commonly hear when customers compare our equipment to our competitors' equipment is our equipment tends to be much more intuitive to use. The learning curve is shorter. It's just easier to navigate the user interface and easier to, to use the analyzer. The reason we believe our analyzer is very easy to use is we break the entire user interface up into four different zones. If you'll notice on our screen, the upper left-hand corner, we have the RF zone. On the right side of the screen, we have the display zone. In the lower left portion of the screen, we have an audio zone. And then in the bottom portion of the screen, we have a meter zone. And if you'll notice, there's an outline around these keys. You'll see that the number one and two correspond to the RF zone and the display zone. And the four and five correspond to the audio zone and the meter zone. We call these hotkey shortcuts. So the user interface to navigate the user interface, it's as simple as this. If you want to do anything with RF, if you want to set a monitor frequency, a generate frequency, attenuation level, literally anything with RF, you simply hit the number one hotkey. That directs you to the RF zone. Once you're in the RF zone, each and every selection is on the vertical soft keys. You can open up the monitor frequency, type in any frequency you need, press the enter key. You can select bandwidth, select any of your bandwidths, attenuation, you can select the up and down arrow key, you can use the tuning knob, or you can do a direct entry. And by the way, the tuning knob on the R8100 is now an enter key. You can simply press the tuning knob and it functions as an enter key. Next, if I hit the number two hotkey, it'll direct me to the display zone. That's where I can find any of my displays. The system default is the spectrum analyzer. If I want to bring up, let's say, bar graphs or oscilloscope, any other display, I just hit select instrument at the top, and then I get a list of displays that are available to me on the horizontal soft keys. For example, I'll press bar graphs. Now we've got our bar graph screen up, and it displays your monitor deviation, frequency error, and input level all on one screen. The next zone is the audio zone. So you think of it like if you're looking for any audio feature, whether it be PL, DPL, variable tone generators, fixed one kilohertz tone generator. If you're looking for anything audio, you, hit, you press the number four hotkey. And again, that directs you to the audio zone. Once you're in the audio zone, again, for consistency, each and every one of the selections are on the vertical soft keys. There may be five pages because the R8000 does a lot. Lastly, the last zone is the meter zone. So if you press the number five hotkey, it will take you to the meter zone. From there, you'll say hit select meter and you'll find all your meters available. For example, if I hit synad slash distortion, it'll bring up my synad meter along with my distortion meter. So in summary, the way the user interface on the 8100 works, if you want to do anything with RF, you press the number one hotkey, 
and all your selections are on the vertical soft keys. If you want to find or select any other displays, in this case I want to go back to my spectrum analyzer, I'll press the number 2 hotkey, I'll hit select display, I'll select my spec in on the lower left hand corner, and I it just brought up my spectrum analyzer. Next, the audio zone. Press the number 4 hotkey, and then I'll get a list of all my audio functions. Lastly, again, if I want to select any metering function, I press the number 5 hotkey. It takes me to the meter zone. I hit select meter. I get a list of meters that are available. In this case, I'll select power meter. Now it brings up my power meter. Next, I'd like to point out that the R8100 is a fully functional service monitor at 14 pounds. What we mean by a fully functional service monitor is we believe the unit has everything in it that you need to verify op proper operation of both infrastructure equipment and subscriber units. So whether you're on the bench testing radios or you're out in the field testing repeaters, duplexers, infrastructure equipment, the monitor has all of the equipment included that you need. Next I'd like to point out that the R8100 is equipped with an internal lithium ion battery. The lithium ion battery is located on the side of the monitor you just remove this little cover, it's very easy, and then the battery pops out. The battery runtime is approximately an hour and a half. Now that I've demonstrated the four zones and how easy it is to navigate the user interface, I'd like to show you a couple of other things. Let's say now that you're done with all your everyday testing, aligning the standard servicing radios, and you're wanting to troubleshoot and you want to use the spectrum analyzer. You'll notice that the spectrum analyzer on the R8100 is a very powerful spectrum analyzer, but it's limited in size to within the display zone. What we've done is we've come up with a list of full screen instruments that you can use for troubleshooting. To go to a full screen instrument, it's as easy as pressing the blue instrument button. That takes you to the instrument selection menu. Once you're in the instrument selection menu, you get a list of full screen instruments available to you. So in this example, I'll press the spectrum analyzer, and now I've got my full screen spectrum analyzer. And incidentally, as I mentioned, the spectrum analyzer on the R8100 is very powerful. I can actually show you noise floors down to minus 140 dB. So if you're looking for those very low level signals, you can see those signals on the 8100 spectrum analyzer. Also, you should note that the escape key takes you one page back. It's kind of like a home key. If I hit the escape key, it took me back to the instrument selection menu. There's another display that I'd like to, uh, to demonstrate. If you press the dual display, this takes you to the dual display mode. This allows you to bring up the spectrum analyzer and the modulation scope at the same time. So you can look at your RF carrier to determine that your radio is transmitting on the proper power level and at the proper frequency, and you can also look at your demodulated audio without having to switch back and forth. Very nice feature, and it's easy to use. Right now you'll notice that the spectrum analyzer is highlighted. So all the controls on the right are for the spectrum analyzer. If I wanted to change a setting on my mod scope, I just go up and hit select instrument, then I select modulation scope in the lower left hand corner, and all the controls revert to mod scope controls. So far we've discussed testing and aligning radios in analog mode. I've showed you how to navigate the user interface and I've showed you how to go to some of the full screen instruments. I'd also like you to understand that we support essentially all of the digital protocols within LAN mobile radio. We can test radios in digital mode whether it be in P25, P25 trunking, DMR, all of those modes. Those modes are test modes. To get it, go to any test mode on the R8100, you press the test button. From there, you press test mode. Then you'll get a list of test modes that are available. For example, I'll select project 25. That quickly, we're in our P25 zone. And notice that we don't significantly change the user interface. We still have a four zone system. In the upper left hand corner, we have the RF zone. To the right, we have the display zone and we default it to voice frame decode. The lower left hand corner, we've replaced the analog audio zone with the P25 zone and we still have a meter zone. Also understand that the hotkeys still work the same. We can press the number one hotkey to go to the RF zone, the number two hotkey to go to the display zone, and so on. 
That wraps up our short video demonstration for today. For additional information, please visit our website at www.freedomcte.com. As always, feel free to contact me directly as well. My phone number is 602-721-5889. Thank you and have a great day.